All right, let's see if we've mastered the auto technology this morning. So I know I, <laughs> out in the garage, I screwed up already. Um, I've never changed my screen, so you couldn't see the crapsy board. Um, although I was rolling very well, and we did good. Um, actually, let's show you. Let's show you where we are. I, I think it's important to to celebrate the wins when they come, right? So, um, the 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 daily paycheck to this week is the permanent press, which I've already made the verdict on. Um, probably not a daily driver for me, right? We can already see that um, it got beat so bad the first day we tried it. Now again, I played it super aggressively. It would have got beat anyway, even if I was conservative. That thing would have got crushed yesterday. Um, it's down. It's down 4K in two days. But today we made money. Today we actually came back, and um, it made 500 bucks in five rolls, which is what it's designed to do, right? These strategies, the right side stuff, is always designed on a wing and a prayer, right? It's like, hey, if we get five rolls, or if we get six rolls, or if we get three rolls, we're going to be just fine. And that's how most right side plays are sort of designed, um, and how we hope they manifest themselves. Um, today it worked out. Yesterday was the complete opposite of that. I finished the session this morning by rolling out um, what I call the tier pressure strategy. It's, it's my favorite way to attack a table. Um, on, it, I think it does the best on a super long roll than any other way that we play, um, but it's got to catch a long roll. You saw we fizzled out three times in a row toward the end there trying to make it catch a long roll. If it catches one, you'll see that it's meteoric and how it makes you money. Um, but it's 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 got this advantage over the permanent press that it's safer in the early stages. The permanent press strategy, it just there, there's no there's no safety net with that thing. And I think the biggest takeaway so far, and I've played it, I've played it a couple times in the casino at lower levels. I've played it a bunch here with you. And the permanent press, it seems like it's a great idea. And the math on it, quote unquote, works if you're getting the, the right sequence of rolls, but it does not recover well. Like some of these things, oh, you know, you get a seven and you can recover back from it. Tier pressure, good example, right? You lose 250, the next roll you catch six rolls, you win 750, right? You recover plus profit. This one does not recover well. Um, it needs it needs steam to build up for it to recover. I don't think it's a daily driver. Um, and there's no transition from it. Like, you know, going from like when I do the, the across bets and I, and I transition to inside bets with profit, that's a, trans, that's a moving from phase one to phase two. Permanent press has got no phase two. It's just you're just going to go inside and you're going to press, you know, your, whatever you're pressing forever until you make profit. There's danger in that. So I think it's, it, it's interesting and it's fun to kind of shoot around and play with here. Um, I did this on Big AZ's channel when I did his $1,000 $1, uh, challenge got murdered on it, right? Just tried it, got murdered. It just doesn't hold up. So we're gonna play it the rest of the week. We're gonna keep on, on goofing around with it, but I don't think this is one that we're gonna save as far as a daily driver. Um, I was gonna actually film a video on this uh, for the ProCraps side. Um, as far as, you know, ProCraps, you know, strategy to play. Um, I'm not gonna film it. I may, I may film it as a cautionary tale and say like, here's a, here's a way to do this, but definitely not um, it's not a quick win, number one. It takes too long to build those bets up, and two, it's not stable. So there it is. There's my, my, my day two judgment of the permanent press. I think it's got a cool name, and it's got a cool rhythm to it, but it ain't a money maker, and that's that. So um, with that said, let's get back to the regular show, and I have a couple things to announce. Um, Friday Night Fights, uh, we do have a repeater. We know Jason, by the way, won. Um, the database was not deleted, I'm happy to announce. Um, here's what happened. Let me, let me actually switch screens for you here. Give me one second, I'm gonna go to this. Um, let's, sorry about the confusion, let's move this over here. Um, all right, there is actually the, you can see, and we can, I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute. Um, here's the, uh, the stats. Let's go to um, casinogaming.tv, actually, casinogaming.tv. And I'll click, just in case you don't know how to do this, We'll click the heads up craps button. And also, by the way, if you're not yet as part of our Discord, just click this link here. It'll take you to Discord. You can join in on the, the, the post show chats and everything else. Um, but if we go to the heads up crap link, link up here, you'll find, I hope, that we're back. Um, I think we're back. Give it a second here to find the data. It does take it a second to get the, the database server to heat up. But I didn't lose the data. What happened was um, the server, the company that we were hosting with, um, turned all of our stuff off. Uh, they went from a from a 
pricing tier that was zero to a pricing tier that was like 25 bucks a month and didn't, I didn't read the emails. Here it comes. Um, so <laughs> we got burned, unfortunately, by having our website down. The database, though, I did have as, as a separate thing. So the database is still here. Here's all the history of King of the Mountain. However, when um, when Jason, by the way, cancel, uh, when he beat Old Bay, we didn't log that in. And then Campro came in and played Jason. So I got to put those in. But next up is going to be Colonel Potter. Colonel, Colonel Potter's back to play uh, Jason. So it's going to be uh, Jason beating Old Bay, Jason beating Campro, Colonel Potter coming in. It's all still here. If you want to jump in and play King of the Mountain with us, all you got to do is click the login button on that page. Um, once you're logged in, you have a sign up button and you click the sign up button and your name goes in the list. Just like that. It's so easy. Couldn't be any easier than that. Okay. Sign in. You just, all you got to do is have a Discord account. Once you're signed in, click the button, you're in and you're playing us and that's it. We have, but we have enough people here. Once a week, we got two months. We, we're going to go to, this is going to take us to February, right? Isn't that great? Um, everybody sign up. This has been kind of a fun thing. I think um, some weeks have been, have been um, not that fun because it is what it is. Some weeks we have bad dice rolling and weird betting strategies and it doesn't work out. But by and large, this has been pretty cool um, to, to have a kind of a returning weekly champion. So there it is, folks. Get logged in. I didn't lose the data. I'm super stoked about not losing the data. Um, we got lucky. Although, you know, what? let's do while we're here. Let's um, go back. Since we're on the screen, somebody asked last week, what are, the, what, are the, what are the overall stats? Here's the overall stats. Let me zoom in a little bit for you there. Here's the overall so far stats. The ones that have won are in green, right? This thing is, is work, it works basically by giving you a little color coding. So the three-point Johnny, which is, um, which is the three combats that have progressive odds, that one won. Um, it was three and two, so we lost twice, won three times. But it's a non-volatile strategy, right? So that strategy doesn't lose that much. That's why we're still with an 8% profit for the week. We ran that one. The wedge got destroyed. Terrible rolling. The come ladder won at 100% clip. It always does. That thing is a great strategy. Won 45% for the week. That's awesome. 410 Bank Street, Traveling Lay. The Traveling Lay was one that I was surprised by. That thing lost um, 100% over the course of a week. I That one is usually pretty strong for me, but boy, oh boy, we got murdered in that one. 410 Bank Street um, did not work well at all. I rolled zero fours and tens. We rolled nothing. That was a week where my, and like today's a good example, right? My, my toss style does not result in a lot of fours and tens typically. So not surprising that we got crushed on that one. Um, I want to revisit the 410. Skill Lux 330 Surprise did well. We were three and one. The problem with right side strategies like this one is the one costs you a lot. We look at that one, the 330 surprise. Um, we won, won, won. We got beat for a grand, right? Um, and that was a day that I stopped rolling because it was time. We probably would have lost more as bad as my rolls were that day. We did recover a little bit, but boy, oh boy. Um, I, I picked off the lay bets every time that day. Um, so that was, a, that was a tough one to swallow. That one I think has more potential than it showed. Um, the Horseman, of course, won at a 75% clip. Normally, that's about an 85 to 90% winner, um, and it made its money. The Squeeze Play squeaked out a win, but we only played it three times. That was the holiday week, so we only played it three times. That one deserves a, another look, I think. Um, Wayland's Don't Pass Express did not survive my rolling. We had, one again, one bad day, I think, where we lost a shit ton. We lost 4500 bucks in one day. The other days, it won, you know without sweating too much. But the one day that we, we burned it, we burned it. And that's unfortunate. And now here we are. We're looking at the permanent press down here. I'll slide that one up. Actually, I'll do it right now. I'll slide it up so it's with the others. Um, there it goes, permanent press. What happened to my numbers? There it goes. Um, so, so far we're down 4K. <laughs> After getting destroyed yesterday. So, um, I think this is cool. We'll probably do, I got another probably 10 strategies down here that I wanna run. Um, things that I like to play. I may highlight these actually in different colors, so you know which ones are mine, which ones are things that I'm running for other people. But we've got, you know, um, the Hangover Remedy from Nemo's got to get in here. We've got uh, a couple other things to come in here that I want to run through. I may even run the Super 7 Hops from Tony Leo with my rolls and just hop the sixes and ones 
and see how we do there. We have lots of things to put in here and see what's a good daily driver. And then I'll come back and do them again, right? We've only got, you know, one week worth of results in here, four times usually. Um, I'll come back in again with these guys and we'll do a second set of four days for all of them and see if they really do kind of roll through. And we may do a little bit of, uh, like we talked about, we, we may do a little bit of, <clears throat> of looking at how these things respond not only over time, but how do they respond and work when I'm not just, you know, playing it straight, right? If we inject a little bit of, okay, we're hitting more of this, alter bets and that kind of thing. So we may do a little bit of, of extra stuff in those things, reading the table. I'm trying to run these things as flat out straight up as I can. So there's there's all that. Um, let's see. Um, Amy Garcia, I have not seen you here in chat for a while. Use my system and I'll be a winner to the day I die. Your system has to be in here too, yes. I will play your system as well. I've been promising you that for about a year now. Um, I will definitely get your system in there. We'll, we'll play yours here as one of the things. I'll call it the Garcia Special unless you have a better name for it. But yeah, we'll get you in there for sure, dude. I think uh, you've been you've been a loyal a loyal watcher of ours for a long time. So yeah, I do owe you. I gotta get your, your system out there for sure. All right. <clears throat> Up next, also talk about Craps Chat coming up on the 11th, this coming Sunday. And again, we're going to talk a little bit of Crapsy. So um, and not about the app itself, I don't think, maybe a little bit, but we want to talk about using Crapsy. I asked you yesterday about some ideas um, about having some way of us to schedule our different table times um, as YouTubers, but also about having a common table time on purpose all going live at the same time and letting you kind of table hop. That's going to be um, that's going to be uh, dependent on Crapsy letting you have your bankroll. Once Crapsy has the ability to kind of let you take your bankroll from table to table, that'll make more sense. What I really want to see out of Crapsy, by the way, and, I, and, and between you, me, and the fence post, um, I did email Chuck at Crapsy, and I said, you know, a, a big thing that I want to see is this this shared bankroll. I think is a big deal. I think being able to buy into Crapsy with five thousand bucks and take that five thousand. And as you go from person's table to person's table, you buy into their table with that money, right? That lets you say, if I had a 401g account of this amount and I played with, with Alfredo or John or, or Jeff or AZ or whoever, um, how does my strategy work today against those throws? And it lets you really kind of be an independent player in the overall universe of Crapsy. I think that's gonna be, I think kind of a game changing thing for them. Once they once they get that out there, that's gonna really change, change how Crapsy I think works within our community. I think we've embraced it as a great app. We've given them lots of good ideas. I think once those kind of things start happening, um, then yeah, I think we're gonna see some interesting ways of, of us playing within the game. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to the next release of that thing. So, all right, um, and again, I was gonna have a guest on today. I screwed up. Um, I, I got busy at work yesterday. Um, I wanted to do a quick dry run with this person. Uh, make sure audio is going to work. We don't have the because sometimes we get echo and it's annoying. Um, I want to do a quick dry run of, of, of audio. Uh, make sure that we're on the same page in terms of topics and that kind of thing. Today after the show, that person and I will talk. Um, we'll get everything set up and we'll have we'll have uh, we'll have somebody coming in tomorrow and chat with us. And I think it's actually good timing because we're we're having these conversations about House Edge. We did this morning. We're running this unicorn strategy and trying to figure out what the hell it is. Um, oh yeah, yes. I'm gonna. Remote admins are essential. I, that was my one of my number one things. Is having a remote admin. You gotta have somebody able to log your rolls for you while you're rolling, because that just removes. For me, the rhythm of typing into Crapsy just takes away from what I'm saying and how I'm rolling. You gotta have that for sure. That's a big one. Um, so anyway, um, that's. I got, oh, hey, we're the guest. So yeah, so we'll have the guest on later in the week. I think. Working through this 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 unicorn kind of way of playing, talking about house edge, talking about right side versus dark side versus profit centers and that kind of thing, I think that's going to help drive some conversation, right? I think we can we can look at what we've learned and what we've seen, and um, apply you know kind of kind of conjoined conjoined thoughts there, and we'll get something going. So there's that. Um, all right, let's move ahead and and just get into it, shall we? Let's talk about the unicorn. Now the unicorn, what I'm looking to do here, and I think this is going to not just be this week. I think this is going to take us more than more than just this week in the show, um, trying to build what we're going to call quote unquote the perfect crap strategy. And there is no perfect crap strategy. There's no way to 
no way to make this thing uh, a beatable game. Right? You have a house edge, you have to fight. Um, it's a negative EV game as a result of that. The seven is too powerful um, to, to overcome with any kind of consistency. Even dark side players have got to overcome the seven on the combat roll, right? There's just no, no way to kind of make the perfect set of bets. However, we can go out here. <laughs> That's funny, JR. That's great. E pluribus unicorn. Um, I think there is a way for us to do our best to attack a table in certain ways, right? And I think when I build a strategy, whatever I build any strategy, I always have goals like this in mind. Never this aggressive as goals, though. These goals are pretty aggressive. And you think about, I want to profit by roll two, no matter what happens, right? By roll two, I want the seven to make me money, or I want my, my right side play to make money, too. I want them both to be able to profit in two rolls. That's a tall order. That's going to be today's, today's topic. Um, I want to dominate a monster roll. I think, I think I've got that one on lock. I think the tier pressure strategy that I, that I do um, on a monster roll is the safest way to make a ton of money. I really believe that. Um, I think that's kind of the secret sauce. That, that strategy is the secret sauce to a monster roll, I think, better than triple lux or anything else um, because of its collection pattern that it does. Um, but I want to be out of the hand early. right? I want to be collecting all the time. I don't want to be sitting out there forever and never collect. Now, tier pressure doesn't collect all the time. It waits for six rolls to collect, but it collects every six rolls. Um, that could be seen as a positive or negative. Um, I want it to be scalable. I want to play it at bubble craps when I'm, when I'm bored and poor um, and when I just want to drink. I want to play it at the $10,000 level and make big money. Right? I want to play these things, this strategy, at any level. I don't want to be dependent on, oh, I can't play this because my bankroll is too small. Right? It should work at 200 bucks at the dollar bubble craps. It should work at a grand right? at the regular table. It should work at 10 k when the bank rolls are bigger. I want the same strategy to work at all the levels for all the reasons. That's an important piece. So how do we get it to do that? Um, it's, well, it's easier said than done. And I think what I see here is <clears throat> this strategy, like everything else I do, and I preach hard, you know I preach so hard about this, it's gotta be a three-phase strategy, right? And I think every, when you play at the tables, your strategy itself can be one strategy played in three phases. That's an important thing. You can play the same way over three phases. Mentally, the three phases is bankroll management. And I think I was talking to Victor, and I think I was talking to Nemo uh, over chat and Discord about bankroll management strategies. And I think Victor's, a thing that Victor does that is very, very close to my heart, he's got what he calls the rail abacus, that he, he manages his rack in a very specific way. If you played with me in Vegas, you know I do the exact same thing. I got videos out on how my, my rail management system works. If you don't have control of your money, you're gonna die a quick death, right? So I think that's a big part of it. The three phase approach is a rail management strategy in itself, right? And in phase one, we get out of the hand quick, or you get paid, right? And I'll give you an example, the skill 66. We know the skill 66 is 66 inside. The first inside hit, you press to 88 bucks. You take your full winnings, plus a buck from your rack, go to 88. At 88, it pays 28 bucks. You bring everything back to your rack, you've, you've made 50 bucks. It's a profit of 50 bucks in two hits, right? The two hit, phase one is, in that strategy, two inside hits, you're 50 bucks in profit. That's a perfect idea, right? Now, if you had 50 bucks in lay bets on the four and 10 at the same time, you achieve my other goal, right? Which is the early seven wins you 50 bucks, or I guess you'd need 75 bucks on both the four and 10. The early seven wins you 75 bucks, you lose 66, you're out of that, you're out with a small profit. That's okay. Two rolls and a seven, you make money. Two rolls without a seven, you made 50 bucks, the lay bets come down, you're, you're 50 in profit. That's the way you play phase one, right? Two hits, the seven comes, you make money, your strategy makes you money. Then you go to phase two. In phase two, you start locking up base profit. Phase two says, my session goal is, at a thousand bucks, my session goal is a hundred dollars or two hundred bucks, whatever it is. Now you take that fifty bucks and you make two hundred bucks with it. Now you be aggressive. That phase two to me is generally speaking for me, it's a more hyper aggressive time to play. You're gonna put that fifty bucks at work, hard at work, to make your session goal right there. You're playing for free, you make that session goal. That's ideal, ideal circumstance. Turn fifty in this case into two hundred. 
or let's say you bought them for 500, turn 50 into 100. That's a more a more logical, reasonable goal. Then phase three is you build the massive profit. Phase three is you just you're you're, you're free balling it and you're playing for free, and you're going again, not hyper aggressive. That's going to be I think phase three actually is where I'm more cautious, honestly. Phase two is where I'm going for that session goal quick. I want to lock that shit up. Phase three is like, okay, now we're on. By phase three at roll six, roll seven of a shooter, you're looking for this guy to go on a 20 or 30 roller at that point. That's a good press collect, press collect, press collect um, on, a, on a rhythm in that phase three. Phase two, I think, is where I get aggressive. So I want to focus us today, if I can, um, on phase one. Okay, Phase one is going to be a number of, of, of small goals. Okay, and doesn't again the bankroll doesn't matter if it's two hundred, a thousand, ten thousand. I don't care. We have to think about what is your phase two target amount that you've got to work backwards from the, the what I have here in red. The phase two target. Let's say it's the skill sixty six. Let's say skill and luck wants to play forty four inside. My target's forty four inside. That strategy is designed backwards from forty four dollars. How can I win forty four bucks in two rolls, sixty six to eighty eight? to 44, locks up a $6 profit, out there with 44 bucks. That's the idea, right? It's beautiful. Um, number one, you wanna catch a point safely. That could mean skipping the come out roll. You catch a point safely. That could mean playing the don't pass with some odds or a lay bet somewhere else to try and catch the come out point safely so you have a don't pass bet. Then you gotta get max of two rolls. I, I personally, max of two rolls to get to your your phase two target amount. You gotta work, I think, backwards from that target amount. So I wanna work on phase two or phase one today. I wanna to only focus on two rolls at a time. A, how do I get a point if it matters to me? B, how do I protect my, 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 my bet spread? And C, how does my bet spread make my actual bet spread in two rolls? That's what I wanna to get to. It's very, very hard to do this. Um, so, with that said, let's head to the table and make it difficult. Let's go back here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Oh, look at that big shadow. Let me go turn the light on. And for those of you YouTubers in the audience, watch the magic. The shadow goes away. You know how the shadow goes away? Chris, Sideshow Gamble, tell them how the shadow goes away. Um, we point the light at the ceiling, believe it or not. The lights actually point at the ceiling, not at the table. Trick I learned. Okay, here we go. Let's pick any strategy you want. I don't care what it is. We can do the squeeze play because we were doing it yesterday. It doesn't mean that's what I'm trying to, to, to play for here, but let's, let's do, let's do um, the squeeze play. Or not, let's not do that. Let's do something different. Let's, let's play. Let's get to mine. All right? I'm, I'm just going to be selfish here. Let's do tier pressure. I want to get to the tier pressure quickly here. Okay? And the lowest level I can play that, by the way, is 130. Right in the garage today, and we can set it up the way I played it in the garage this morning, like this. I'll show you the the, the bet amounts. Are, it's 250 across, and I'll show it to you in a couple. Of, it doesn't matter what the level is. Your 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 come out strategy has to be has to match that. So it's going to be 40 on the five and nine, 60 on the six and eight. We're going to use the G Money special strategy to press everything up to uh, to earn a couple hundred bucks here. That's the idea is that any repeater earns you 200 bucks. That's the, that's the idea. Um, and I'll, I can demonstrate that quickly, but that's not the point of today, right? So like, for example, the 10, that's gonna pay 75 bucks, or 50, we go to 75, 75 wins 150, you're back at your base with the $200 profit. That's the idea is that all these bets earn you 200 bucks and let us transition to phase three. But here's the thing, if I want to play 250 across, right, and I need to get here in two rolls. I want to get to where I'm playing at 250 across safely in two rolls. Now, this strategy is a big money strategy. This is not like you're coming out here with a, with a little bit. I can scale this back, and I will do that right now, to 130, which is a little more attainable for, for the $1,000 bankroll that I specified. Let's put this out here and keep it in our sights as a target. 15 on the four and 10, 20 on the five and nine, and 30 on the six and eight, okay? This becomes 130 across. 
All right? That's 30, 60, plus 40 is 100, plus 15 is 130. 130 across. So if that's our target, I'm just going to put this kind of, I'm going to put a buy button next to it because that's where I want to get to. Okay? How do I get to here quickly? What's the quickest way to get to this being paid for? 130. Well, some of the bets that we know that we can get down to 130 in two hits, right? If we were to go here, and I'll put these bets in the back row, right? Let's do this. If I went out at 220, which is more than 130, I know, but trust me on this, okay? We know that 220, two hits at 220, each of these 50, 60, 50, each of those pays 70 bucks, okay? So one hit, 70 bucks, two hits is 140. That means I can play 130 with $10 in profit. So in two hits from 220 inside, I'm at my goal. If I work backwards from all this, I know that if I had two hits at that level, I can afford to play the actual strategy, which I think attacks the monster better than 220. Okay? So, how do you get 220 to live on its own for two rolls? And here's the big question, right? I want to make sure I can use this to fund that. Step one, step two. Well, you can lay stuff. Like option one might be this. Option one might be 25 hours on the don't pass. Right? Catch a point. How do you save the don't pass at that level? Well, you're going to have to put, if you're going to do this the right way, quote unquote, probably play 30 bucks on the don't with two bucks on the yo. Right? Maybe... You do two bucks on the yo and a dollar on, on the 12. That way you don't burn, you don't waste the roll there. Okay? You profit on the 12, you stay even on the 11, you're only fighting one number. Maybe on the come out to get that 30 bucks out, you drop a lay bet on the 10, and you're praying to God you don't see a 10 on the come out. Right? Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's catch a number here and we get a nine. Sweet. So we have a nine, a five, four, nine. And now we're in a pickle, right? We can, we're gonna lose these three. We have a don't pass on the nine, which is great, okay? I still have 220 to protect out here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what do I do to protect my 220? Well, at a three, four, five table, I can go six times that. I can put 180 out there, okay, um, as odds. That removes my nine. It takes my nine out of the equation. I may go here and spread that same money out. Um, I may actually drop, and I probably would do this, I would probably move these out and drop another 10 bucks on them so that everything I have up here pays 70 except for the nine, okay? If the seven rolls, we win 30, and um, 180 is gonna pay 120. So you're going 150. You're not gonna win enough to cover your 220 out here. So this alone isn't gonna get it but it's gonna protect you a little bit. And you can look at this and say, well, if I can survive one hit up in here, which is a tall order, I win 70, now this, technically speaking, covers me, if that makes sense. Let's take a look at the total risk here. Um, let, me, let me lay this out for you. I'll put the win, the potential wins here. So the flat bet would win 30, okay? The odds, and remember, on a, on a five or a nine, 6x odds is the max you can do based on 6x or flat on a 3, 4, 5 table. Um, so 180, it pays 2 to 3. So 180, there's, there's uh, 6 times 3 is 18. So you get 60 twice or 120. So your potential win down here is going to be 30 plus 120, 150. I got 220 at risk. Actually, a little more. 220, I, I got 2. To, to, uh, 240 at risk up here, all right? If I get one hit, let's do the math here. If I get one hit up here at 70 bucks, okay? How does that affect this? If I can get any one of these numbers to hit one time, that's 70 bucks to my rack, okay? If the seven comes on the next roll, we'd have from 240, minus 70 is one, how much, it's 170, right? Is that right, 170? Yeah, 170, 
you'd win 150. So you're, it costs you 20 bucks. If the, if the seven comes on roll two, you lose 20. If it comes on roll one, you're gonna lose about 100 bucks. It doesn't quite get my, 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 my juices going, right? I'm not quite there with what I wanted, which was on an early seven to make money. So there's no making money here on an early seven, which really kind of blows when you think about it. Um, I could overcome that with a combat, right? I can put a, a $25 combat or maybe a $50 combat, which on roll one, now the 150 plus the 20 is 200. I'm getting closer to covering this action. And this just comes up and replaces a number that's up here that's already at 50 bucks. So it doesn't really hurt me to do that. I can get 70 and bring the bet down and be out here for a little bit less actually. That's not a bad way to kind of approach it, although you're left with a contract bet. So there's that. The other option is to say, well, I'm never gonna play this unless I'm at a 10X table, right? In which case I could lay 300 against that nine. If I lay 300 against the nine, now I'm going to win 230 and I'm basically covering my bets, right? 230 versus 220 and you are making money on the early seven. That might be the, the solution to say at this level, you're going to have to be at a 10x table. You're going to have to be willing to put 300 bucks down for a couple of rolls, right? Or let, let's actually roll that out. Let, let's, let's give me two rolls. We'll see what happens. We'll lay 300. We're going to assume we're at this, this, this massive odds table. My, my locals are 300 bucks or 10x max. That's fine. Let's roll. Let's avoid the nine twice. Okay, there's an eight. There's an eight. We got 70 bucks. 50, 70 bucks. And by the way, if I same bet this, which I will do, this is where the house edge, quote unquote, gets you. Same betting is where the house edge really eats into your life. Okay, there's one roll. There's aces, which does nothing for us. So a wasted roll, we're still sweating bullets. There's a five. So we, we, we avoid disaster. We win 70 bucks. Okay, and again, there's 70. There's 70. We're gonna take $10 in profit. We're gonna take back our odds. These bets, I'll leave them up so you can see them. These bets come down and turn into I will take it down. Those bets come back. And now we're out here at 130. So here's our initial back wall. Our, our initial place bets are here. Our lay bet action is here. We've got a couple of bucks sitting there. We've made $10 so far. We're out. We're out of the hand in two rolls. We would have made money on the seven had it come early. We would have been in profit on the seven on the early rolls. That's cool. Right, we used free odds on the dome to our advantage. I still have a no nine bet out here, right? The 20 bucks pays 28, that pays 30. That's a wash right now. In the tier pressure strategy, I don't care about that wash. If the nine happens to hit, so what, we lose this here. This is gonna go to 50 bucks anyway, and we're gonna start playing our strategies. If we lose this bet, I'm okay with it. I have to be okay with that as we go out. That's a way. Right? One way to cover your, your action out here is to bet bigger than you need and lay bigger than you're comfortable with. That's a way to get out there, right? It's scary, right? Because you're fighting that nine for two straight rolls and you're worried about that. 300 bucks can go away pretty quick. That's a way to accomplish it, okay? Let's look at another way to accomplish it. Let's do this. Let's, let's, let's put these bets away. Actually, I'll leave them out. I keep saying that. Um, leave them out there for visuals. And let's take that same, that same target. Let's take, let's not even do this. Let's, let's pretend we don't care about the come roll. What if we did more of a 330 surprise approach to it? Okay. Um, and let's use the 220 inside the same way. We'll go 220. 220 inside. Now 330 surprise has you laying something whether it's the four and 10 or the four or the 10, okay? There's 220 there. If I lay the 10 and the four each for 300 bucks, what can happen to us? Well, if the seven comes early, you're gonna win 300. It's gonna cost you, you know, five bucks and big, um, but you're gonna win 300 bucks. 
Yeah? You're going to lose 220. You're going to profit on a 7 on roll 1 or roll 2. You're going to profit on the 7. In this case, $80. If the 4 or the 10 happen to roll while you're trying to get your 70 bucks to make this bet work, you're going to be down 300 bucks, which really sucks. Okay? Um, and you're, again, you're giving it up here. Uh, this, though, are bets you can pull down. If you get your two rolls, those bets come off the table and you're playing clean and not having that don't hedging off the nine. I like this better. Frankly, I like having the lay bets out there better because I can take them away. My casino locally, we pay the VIG up front, but it comes back to me. So on each of these bets here, you're going to have to pay $7 in VIG, like so. And they, and they basically they, they, they put it right behind. And when I pull the bets down, the VIG comes back. So th those are free shots. Okay, if the 7 comes, you don't get your money back, obviously. Um, but if the seven doesn't come and we get two rolls up in here, we're good. Now, again, you're playing with fire, losing 300 bucks, and what you'd have to do then is put that money right back up there, right? You put the money right back up. You lose 300 bucks. Let's say you play roll 10, and like, shit, I lost my 300 bucks. You got to put it back up there because the seven still is, is in play. Potentially, you can lose 600 bucks in those two rolls, right? We catch a point. You roll a four, you're like, well, fuck, that sucks. We'll put 300 four bucks out there, and you roll a 10. You're like, well, shit, now I lost that 300. Now you're out six, and you're, you know, got nothing to show for it. This can get squirrely. The day that I lost on the 330 surprise, that's what happened to me, right? I rolled the 10 twice in a row, and then a four, right? We got the worst case scenario, and it, and it burdened us. But this is a little bit better in terms of, at least I can get them out of play, and there's no conflicts of interest up in here. So that's the way to approach it. Um, whoops, there goes my back. All my money just dropped. Um, so there's that's an option, and we can roll that out real quick. Let's just let's pretend. Ah, excuse me. Pretend we got no point. Okay, coming out clean. We'll set this up. Everything's off for the come out roll. Let, we'll let, let the shooter catch a point, and they catch a six. Great, now we're on a point of six, looking for two rolls, right? Looking for two hits in here, two inside hits, and getting off the four and 10, okay? And there's a nine, so that's one inside hit. Avoiding disaster, we got a five. So we did it again, we got a nine and a five, the lays can come down, the 130's paid for, right? That's another, another again, and that's an option for us to pursue. Um, another option that somebody brought up, which is this, I think is interesting too, and I don't think it's enough, I don't think there's enough here to really, to really run this yet, but what about laying the back wall? What about laying the back wall for 200? Um, actually, you'd probably lay it for 400. You'd have to do that. You'd have to come out here at like 80 bucks on the four and 10. Yeah, 80 bucks on the four and 10 and 60 bucks on everything else. Now, here, what happens is this. Let's, let's, do, let's do this. It's going to be, I think, not very strong because you're guaranteed to lose money here. You're guaranteed to lose 80 or 60 as you're winning 70, which means these bets have to be bigger, and even this is not enough to cover it. Right? This, this 200 back here, um, that would pay 40, 80. Let's, let's, let's see what it pays. 80 bucks on the four and 10, okay? The five and nine at 60 bucks would pay 40 each. That's another 80 bucks. The five and nine, the six and eight would pay 100. What does that get you? It gets you 100, 260 bucks. You're out here at 220. However, the $70 wins here net you 10 bucks because you would lose 60 you'd win 70 you're winning 10 dollars it isn't worth it to do this this is a, a nonsensical way to get out there unless you're laying only like the like the outsides and you're hammering the six and eight maybe you lay the five nine four and ten and your six and eights are out here at 120 right you could consider that and have the lowest house edge bets on the box super high and lay, lay the rest of the back wall, which is interesting, because that's going to pay you 80 bucks, and um, uh, what am I losing my, my, my brain here? 80 bucks, they're going to pay 160 between the lay bets up here 
and you've got 240 out there, so you're not quite covered, but you're close. And play for just a six and the eight to save you. That's a, that's a dangerous way of looking at it. It could work, but that's wickedly dangerous to only have two targets. I could see laying a six and eight and placing the four, five, nine, and 10 as an option, right? Having four targets and two anti-targets, right? And let these two pay you 100 each and out here you only got, you know, $115 in risk. I don't know. There's ways to kind of play this out. I think laying the four and 10 is gonna be the most reliable way versus trying to lay the back wall even partially. You lay the back wall partially, you've only got two ways to win. And that makes it really difficult. I would probably do this and press these two. So if I did this, the only way to make this work really is to do this, do it 120 and press them on the wins. So that I think also not, not super safe, but I want to give us all the options, right? So there, there are four different options of saving the 220 or, or surviving with 220 for four rolls or two rolls. Making, one, making our goal. Again, if your goal out here is not 130, my goal is 130, right? Your goal might be 66. What do you gotta do back here to make sure that your 66 is good? It's a little easier for you, right? If that number is smaller, I think the smaller the number, the easier to play. Because honestly, that's a don't pass. It's probably a $10 don't with like 75 or whatever, or $60 in odds. That'll get your 66 covered in almost every case. So think through that, right? You gotta kind of work, whatever you're gonna do on the seven, you gotta work that opposite of what you're betting up here to make it make sense, to make that second phase playable. So I guess in a nutshell, work backwards, right? I'm trying to work backwards from, I wanna get to 130. I gotta win 70 bucks twice, which is 220, maybe plus 35. And I want to make sure that that's safe for two rolls, which means a huge lay here or huge lays here to get it. So there's, there's I think, some of the options. I'm going to go over and look at the chat real quick and see. You guys are probably talking about something. You guys are probably talking about baseball. But um, what other options do we have? And I want to kind of work through this with you all together. What options do we have as well to get through that first phase? Because I really want to get to playing my phase two strategy, which is going to be the more aggressive of the, of the three quickly and for free. So you guys talking about Midmo Yo's new felt. Raphael says three hits, then lays down. Um, yeah, three hits, then lays down is what I'm going for. I'm going for two hits. Two hits and then your lays bet, lay bets are down. I want to make no more than two hits up there. I don't want to survive more than two hits. Get the lay bets out of there. Um, whether it's press or regress, I don't care what you do, right? Me, my phase two, after I'm even, I'm wicked aggressive. I'm going for the freaking ceiling for the next four or five rolls. Then I go press and regress, right? I'm going to be hyper aggressive early and because most rolls are going to be less than 10, right? Or less than eight. I want those next four rolls to be my, my most powerful rolls. And that's why I do that. So um, no one's talking about baseball. Good old, hey, look at you guys talking about craps. Awesome. Um, there you go, right? What else, what other options do we have? Um, besides a don't pass with a, a, a massive amount of odds, laying the four and 10 as option two, or option three, a partial back wall leg. You could hop the reds, and I thought of that too. And let's see what that looks like. If we went out here at 220, like, like so, 220, and we hop the reds. Now you gotta think, what does it take to win 220 on a hop bet? So. You gotta hop for at least, if you hop for 20 bucks on each number, right? So 20, 10's gonna win you 150, 20 is gonna win you 300, 15 will win you somewhere in the middle there, right? 150 plus, you know, 75, what is that, two and a quarter? That barely covers you up here. As a matter of fact, you would lose because you need hop in one, hop in two, hop in three, if that only wins you 75 bucks, you're losing 30 along the way, you're gonna be upside down. You really gotta hop them for 20 bucks each. Like that, right? That wins 300. 
You lose 220, you're up 80 bucks. You're up 80 minus 20, you're up, you're up 40 bucks. Or you're up 60 bucks rather, right? Um, or you're up 40, because you're losing 20. You're losing 40, you're up 20 bucks. Um, that's a way to do it. However, if you don't ever hit it, if you hit a number in here, this $70 win gets swallowed up by 30 bucks in losses, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars in losses, right? So 70 becomes 10 if you're hopping the reds. That becomes a bad bet. Becomes a really bad bet, actually. It's no, it's worse than laying the back wall to do that. I don't think there's enough, you can't hop at the right levels to make this work at all. I've, I've tried to make that work and you can't. Unless you're doing this, you're gonna hop the six one and the five two, or the five two and the three four, right? Whereas you'd win, again, you'd win 300 minus 20, you'd win 280, covers that. Um, on a win up in here, you'd win 70 and lose 40. At least you're winning 30 bucks, but now you gotta win, you gotta do this exact exchange. If you're only winning 40 bucks up here, you gotta do it four times to get your money to pay for your next strategy. So I think hopping, although it's an option, it's not a good option, because you're giving up money, just like you do when you're laying the back wall. You're guaranteeing a loss, and you're guaranteeing squeezing those bets out every single time. I think that's a, that's also kind of a bad move. So, you know, I think hopping or the uh, the any seven, to me it's a non-starter. As is laying the back wall, it's a non-starter. You don't want to win and lose at the same time. You're gonna, you're gonna squeeze these bets down to where they aren't worth anything. I think you can only lay the open numbers. And if you want to do this, 35 on the four and 600 on the 10, okay? You know, the 10 becomes a nightmare for you, but you're down to only three combinations that beat you, and you pick up one over here, option. But damn, that's, that right there is like, oh boy, you want to lay 600 bucks out there for two rolls, and to get all the way down to, to your regression to 130, that's tough, that's tough. I'd rather spread that out, I think, than have one, and I, that's, a, again, a question for you all, right? Would you rather, are you, are you, are you happier here laying three and three? Or are you happier here laying six and having that one be covered? Right, combinations wise, probability wise, this is the better play. Risk wise, that's the better play. Can't lose both at the same time, right? Here you can lose it all in one, which would be really, really painful. So there it is, there's the, uh, there's the options. I don't, know the, I don't know the best option, I think in gameplay, for two rolls, my best option, I think, is to go four and 10 for enough to cover them both. I think that's the, the best option. Um, although it's gonna cost, out of your 1,000 bucks, you have the whole $1,000 out there on the felt. That's pretty, pretty tough, so. Um, yeah, there you go. And California Crafts with 550 inside, one hit, pull down, 160 across free play, except for the PSO, right? Which happens. And you know the numbers, right? 20, three or 24% of the time, that 550 is gonna get lost, right? That's the only reason why I don't do that. I used to think one hit and down was the answer, but the PSO happens, and not PSO, the, the, the person that sets a point and never hits a box number, that's a 22 to 24% chance of that happening. Um, that 550, that's too much to risk to me at a 25% risk rate. I think that's too much. That, that to me, um, that's tough to recover from that. That's a big loss. That's why I'm trying to find the way to spread out over two rolls, which means I can have less than 550. I can have half of that out there, 220. And I can do lay bets that I can actually afford. That's why I'm going after this, this thing um, versus a one-shot hero. Um, you can ask Ian Olson, who played with me a lot in Vegas, how many times his 220 inside got burned by PSOs. He probably lost 220 inside 10 times. I saw him lose that bet 10 times at least on the immediate seven. So there's that. All right, Skill Luck reminds me that he has left me some notes in the PC section, so let's see here. Um, let's see, uh, Galactic <laughs> Degenerate, get it right. That's pretty funny. Um, 
it does need a little bit of work, um, but we're going to roll it out. I'm going to make that thing a, a paycheck strategy for sure. We will for, for sure do that as a paycheck strategy because I think seeing it over the course of five straight days with actual money behind it will give us the what needs to change part of it, I think. So there's that. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, you're right. 15 or 30 bucks. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume a 30. Um, so... And, and you're right here. Here's the thing, though, Skill. If we start that DP at 75 or 90 so we can get more odds to cover those two bets, as soon as you're done, right, and you're at, at your base level, now you're stuck with an enormous don't. Now you can reduce the don't, of course. You can take the $75 down to something smaller and switch over to right side play completely. Option, right? The bigger the flat, the bigger the odds. That's definitely, I'm sorry, that comment keeps going away. That's certainly a way to approach that. And I think I'd rather play the odds as free and make them self-service than have to be laying a bunch of shit up on the top. So I think that's definitely a, that's definitely a, a, a tougher one. Um, lay four and 10 with a DP, that could also help, right? If you get a DP for like 50 bucks, the lay bets can be smaller because that $50 flat is going to pay flat. Now I can lay the four and 10 for like 200 each or 250 each, right? And 250 wins 250 plus my my $50 flat, right? That takes a whole hundred bucks out of the equation up in the top section. So I think that's actually a, a solid way to approach it too. So um, yeah, old basing, any way on strategy playing the four and tens is perfect when Ian also is shooting the dice. That's funny because Ian does hit some fours and tens. Um, you know, and, and an option here too is to, is to play, play the Grim Reaper basically along with those inside bets, right? And let you know, do the Grim Reaper with the inside 220 and really hammer the 4 and 10 for what they are and then get out of it as soon as you get into the insides, right? If you hit a 4 and 10, go back out of 220 and level those damn things up. Like Reaper those things. I would progress those those seven wins and, and get after it. I think that's a good way to, to approach it. So um, anyway, I'm not yet sold on any of it, right? I don't think, let me get back to the other, the other screen here. Um, I'm not yet, I'm not yet convinced of that of our come out play. I'm not yet sold on the four and ten being the way to protect the insides. I've been burned by that as you've seen enough times to know that that's going to hurt me. Although I am convinced that my phase three play, like my phase two play, is what it is. It's going to get me to goal. If we lose out on the lay bets, my phase two play becomes get the lay bet money back. And I got to repeat the whole process again to get into um, the phase three. So again, I, I I I do like the idea of a bigger don't skill with bigger odds down there, having one one number that can bite me instead of instead of the two. So I I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I got to roll it out some more. I got to get out there. I, we got to do this multiple multiple times and see which one's more safe, um, and see what what actually feels a little bit better. So. That's it. I'm still working through it. I don't know that we have the answer yet. The unicorn strategy um, only works if the first two rolls are covered in a predictably safe way. That's what it comes down to. But the first two rolls have got to be covered in the safest possible way. It might be a case of laying the four and ten and hopping the four and ten for like five bucks each and taking a little bit of a hit there and reducing that risk by half. That might be a thing too. So. Um, yeah, I'll look at the storm too, Dgen, and um, then see what we're looking at the Green Ripper, the Grim, the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Um, all right, folks, that's it. Um, I got to get out of here. I'm gonna go check work emails, get to get my day going. But that's my thought process. If we can beat two rolls, right, or two hits, we can secure two inside hits. We can get to base. That's what I'm looking at in this particular way. Um, and again, I'm I'm targeting the unicorn at inside hits early, across bets mid. And then pressing like a maniac after we get there with some with some built-in collection schemes. So there it is. Um, keep thinking about it, guys. Keep thinking about it. Practice stuff at home. And tomorrow, come with some juice. Tomorrow, come back here with, hey, we tried this. This kind of works. And let's strategize it. I'm not going to have all the answers here in one in one morning. So I think I gave you a bunch of options. I want you to explore some options. Let's together tomorrow try and figure it out. So maybe in Discord. Drop me some notes, and we'll see uh, what the group comes up with. In the meantime, I got to get out. I'll see y'all later. Thanks for playing along, and thanks for being here. Um, guys are awesome. Love y'all.
and see you in the morning. Bye.